Oxford University economist Lindy Yu is here with me to talk about the complex relationship between the two countries and the way it stands right now. Linda, welcome. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, it was interesting. The, the US uh, called the talks yesterday uh, productive and constructive, very positive. And yet, I didn't see much that came out of it that was particularly productive. Uh, do you think anything really gets decided at these kind of talks? I think behind the scenes, they feel each other out to see whether or not there is actually any possibility of movement. But because the Chinese are so wary of not being accused of yielding to Western pressure, Pressure, they are never going to announce anything formal after these talks. And in fact, in many ways, China has a lot of economic reasons relating to liquidity and inflation to revalue their currency, but they're hesitant about doing it after a summit with the Americans, and certainly not if the Americans are going to accuse them of being a currency manipulator, mm -hmm. which is also on the cards in a report out due this week. Yeah, it's very interesting because there's obviously quite a lot of pressure internally in, with, uh, with U.S. congressmen, senators, mm -hmm. to come up with this this phrase, and actually it's probably the absolute worst thing they could do if they really want China to, re to revalue. Uh, China's saying uh, today in their statement, they came out and said that they'll do it in their own time. Very clear indication there that they don't want to feel like they're being pressured into this from elsewhere. Very much so, because when they revalue even a touch, there will be exporters who go out of business, because even though China clearly has a comparative advantage, it has very cheap labor, there are still some exporters with very thin margins who will go. And therefore, you will have Chinese unemployment, which, of course, is the same reason why American congressmen always pressure the Chinese, because they're worried about U.S. unemployment, which has doubled during this recession. Indeed. Uh, I mean, China also saying that revaluation cannot balance uh, the, the trade problem, um, and it also can't solve U.S. unemployment. That's true up to an extent, isn't it? But actually, obviously, a revalued yuan would be very useful to the U.S. It would actually be. So, yes, at the margins, it would actually matter. Matter. So if some Chinese exporters were to go out of business, you could imagine the rest of the rebalancing of the world getting slightly better because the Chinese surplus shrinks. Therefore, deficits also will shrink in the other countries. But of course, this is where they differ the most. The Chinese believe the exchange rate has to be based on their domestic economic needs. They don't necessarily see their exchange rate as playing a pivotal role in the world. But the Americans, actually, and many others would say the Chinese underestimate their impact as the world's third largest economy. What they do does have an impact. It will not solve U.S. unemployment. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the U.S. will probably still run a deficit, given the size of its budget deficit, which feeds into its deficit in the rest of the world, because it has to sell bonds overseas. So it's never going to right the world economy, yeah. but it will help at the margins. You, you put your finger really on, what's on, the, on the issue here. It's all about uh, China's place in the world right now, isn't it? Very much so. China views itself as a developing country. Per capita GDP ranks it as a hundredth in the world, in the bottom half, in other words. But it is such a big economy that everything it does has a global impact. But the Chinese don't necessarily want to set policy with a view um, towards what it ha means for the rest of the world. They want to act as if they're a small developing country, but they can't. <laughs> Linda, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning.